we have to imagine that uh, this is a sandwich. Uh -huh. And this is the top layer of bread, this is the bottom layer of bread. And everything in between is the meat, the peanut butter, jelly, whatever you want to call it. But we have to imagine that there's a, a center line that cuts this stone right around. And the rule is we can never hit above the center line. So if I was to hit this guy, I would want to hit any point below the center line. Okay. Now the great thing about the center line is we can manipulate it by flipping the stone over. And what we're looking to hit, it's called a platform. And a mm -hmm. platform always resides below the center line and it's always less than 90 degrees. So we can see this corner right here, right? Mm -hmm. We can see that it is less than 90 degrees. And if I have my imaginary line that cuts through right here, it's sitting right below. Now what that does, it gives me the opportunity to hit a piece of stone and remove a flake. Now, if that was above the center line, uh -huh. this might be more abrupt. It gotcha. might be more of a jagged edge. When it's below, it allows me to send a flake along um, what's called the bulb of percussion. And the bulb of percussion is any time you hit a piece of stone, you can pick up any one of these flakes, you can see there's more of a bulbous end. Yep. And that's that hurts king cone. So when we hit it, we're creating a cone, that 90 degree hit, and it's creating a bulb. Every one of these, there's yeah, a bulb. You can see it. Yeah. It's, it's one of those fundamentals in napping that no matter where you're at or what you're looking for, you'll always have a bulb. Now, a lot of people will find a piece of stone and say, this has to be an artifact. The easiest way to tell is, is there a bulb of percussion? If there is, that means somebody meticulously picked it up, held it in their hands, identified the center line, uh, found the platform below the center line, struck it at an angle to you know, that hurts the king cone, and then removed the flake. That's how you know it's a it's an actual uh, artifact when you compare it to just a piece of debutage that you might find on the ground. So when we do this, we always have to think about how we're hitting and where we're hitting. And as I struck this stone here, yep. I removed mass. Now when I flip it over, where's my center line? It's going right through here, mm -hmm. and this guy is now sitting almost right below it. So I can cheat up a little bit knowing that it's on the center line. Anytime I hit an edge, it's a good idea to abrade it because if an edge is razor sharp, it will just crush. So there's nothing really supporting the edge. So my objective is to give it an abrasion, give it a little roughing, and then when I hit the edge, let's see, I'm going to use this big moose billet. I'm going to brace it on the back of my leg like this. And what I'm thinking is when I impact, I know my impact point will create a 90 degree. It's called the Hertzkin cone. Like if you shoot a BB gun at a windshield, yep. it creates that perfect cone. That's essentially what I'm doing, but I'm manipulating how far those edges run by holding the stone. And I just whew, threw that flake there. So now- That's beautiful. Thanks. And now I got edges that will go back and forth. So as I hit this one, pop a flake and do that the whole way. And you'll stitch this the whole way back and forth and then you'll have this rough out edge that you can start removing and thinning out. So look at that. What do we see? Bulb of percussion, removed cortex. This was, uh, even with my center line, I struck it right here. When I hit with soft percussion, I'm not looking to hit right on that edge, I'm looking just to hit right above it. And I struck, mm. and when you strike, you always strike through. Sometimes people will hold a, a piece of stone in their hand like this and they're striking through. When I strike through, mm. I got that flake and now I just removed another piece. One, that's a flake scar, that's a flake scar, that's a ridge. Flakes like to follow ridges. And that's kind of the, the general idea when you are removing mass from a piece of stone. And <clears throat> with that, it gives you the ability uh, to control what you're doing. And that's mm -hmm. the difference between hitting a rock up against another rock and actually looking at it and saying, where can I send this flake to remove mass? So throw your gog or your uh, gloves on, yep. eye pros on. How this really works is, let's pick up, uh, let me get you, let's use this one. This one's already kind of defined, right? So we can see, show me where that center line would be. Right there. Yeah, so it's cutting it right down the middle. There you go. Now flip it over. Does it change? It's just yeah, right there. 
right through there. So you'll have mass top and bottom. It's not gonna be exactly even. So with that, grab a, a hammer stone. Grab that one right there. That's a good little size. Okay. And I want you to hold this guy up against the back of your leg like this. And what you're doing is you're striking down through the stone. When you strike down through the stone, mm -hmm. we're not trying to get, we're not trying to hit high. We're trying to hit right above that edge. So it's it's more of a a tap. Mm -hmm. But you have to make sure where you're hitting is not larger than 90 degrees. Because if it's like this, it won't break. Stone okay. will not break if it's greater than 90 degrees. Okay. As I look at this piece, I'd see this one just as it fizzles out like that. It's less than 90 degrees. Uh -huh. You give yourself a little rotation up and you're going to pop it right there. There you go. Cool. So, pop. so now that you've done that little piece there, you can slowly move your way kind of around it. So you have that next piece. And do you always go on the same side or do you? Not, not like always. You'll flip it back and forth. But as you look at yours, you see there's a large amount of mass right here. So you'll you can flip it over and take a small piece this way a braid a braid a braid when we abraid we're always abrading down okay and when we abrade down we're going to the direction that we want to hit so if you're wanting to remove mass from this side you abrade this way then you flip it over and give okay. it a strike so if i'm removing the flake from this side where i just was yep. you're abrading this way flip it the other way this way yeah okay you always abrade on the side where you want to remove that flip. All right, let's try this. A little more angle. So rotate it up towards, there you go. Like yep, just like that. Give it a good little pop. There you go. That's cool. Okay, so right there, you, know, you, you, you look at this and you're like, I want to hit that, right? Yeah. This is where we'd have to flip this guy over pop off this flake right to address this mass this chunk and as you remove that chunk it will expose another opportunity to drive a flake this way and when you hit so center line over here would be like i'm seeing it like over here what where is it yeah so the center the center line will rotate it won't, mm -hmm. won't rotate it will fluctuate based on the mass you remove but you're trying to keep one consistent center line so i can look at this stone and say i want to remove a blade like this from the inside. So I need to remove that mass. So you just try to always remember where that center line is and what that will give you is consistency of removal. So I've got, you know, this guy right here, right? So I kind of have less than 90 degrees. I'm giving pops, I'm holding it right on the back of my leg. What I'm doing is I've already created yeah, a nice big chopping axe. Bah, bah, two hands, remove the guts from a mammoth, and we're in business. So, yeah, give play with that stone, flip it back and forth, and try to envision removing of that mass. Mm -hmm. To remove this one, would you hit it this I'd way? Flip it right Perfect. over. Okay. Yep. Perfect, right like that. Good. Good. There you go. Nice. Yeah, what you're creating is already that working edge. Yeah. That's that's how simple napping can be if you're saying, all right, I, I'm in a jam. I have stones around me. I've removed three or four little knives, and now I have a nice little chopping tool. And that's real simple tool technology because uh -huh. a lot of people will focus on building these super elaborate points. The idea is really to build tools, tools to survive and live out in the bush, and that's kind of what this is you know, in its simplest form. So. You know, and if you are going through and you're finding that you're removing too much, mm -hmm. your hammer stone's too heavy. You have to change it out. And it's real just, you know, simple. Chop it. Yeah, so give it some more right. play around with it. Let's so see. for uh, this, yeah. I see the center line over here. Okay. Um, and all this mass over here. How would you approach it? Would you take this off first? Yeah, so as I look at it, I'm like, all right, I got this flat edge. I've got this guy. I would give myself that corner. Uh -huh. I'd hit right up here and try to remove a big chunk. So the higher you hit up in the stone, the yep. more mass it's gonna remove. You get a bigger bulb. 
So as I'm looking at this right here, I would aim for right about there. Okay. Hold it at an angle. Give myself a good solid pop at the pointy end of that stone. Yeah. All right. Let's go try. for it. more. There you go. Boom. Nice. Good hit. Now you felt that hit, right? Yeah. That hit was completely different compared to the first two. The first yeah. two, tap, tap that one, you hit and kind of struck through and look at the mass. Now what you've also done is you've created another platform. So flakes love to follow ridges uh -huh. and now you have a ridge. So when you abrade this one down, mm -hmm. you're reinforcing this edge. You flip it over, give it a strike, you'll remove a good little chunk right here. Same sort of hit. So I braid that side. Yeah. Yep. Right here? Yep, perfect spot. Right there. Give a good little pop. And you hit, just doesn't have to be too much of a snap, but. You're hitting right on the edge, so hit a little bit higher. I want, a you, to hit, higher. I want you to hit like right there. Yeah. Bingo. It's crazy how it works, right? That's crazy. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. And now you, if you do the same thing, you remove that mass. Bingo. 10,000 years of, <laughs> we're like 30,000 years of <laughs> technology in 15 minutes, so. That is so cool. Yeah. Same thing. All that ridge. This one right here? Yep. Very perfect. Look at that. To be honest with you, that's a good little chopper. Yeah. You always break down because you have to throw those flakes in your face. Yeah. So what you've got, a very simple hand axe. So what we can do is, see how center line? Mm -hmm. all, right, all those are kind of sitting below it, but you could take this piece right here specifically, mm -hmm. remove a little bit, and that can be done with even that little stone that you got right there. Right? You just kind of, a little pop. Poop. That should pop down there. Much, but it's all good. Yeah. <laughs>